Okay guys, so first of all, before I start this video, I would like to say two things, okay? The first one is that I'm not doing this video for any kind of sympathy or whatever because I'm actually fine, but I'm doing this video to enlighten everyone out there, especially Nigerian women. The average Nigerian woman doesn't take this kind of thing seriously, but trust me, those people who ended up having cancer, those people fighting cancer right now, they did not go through their lives planning to have cancer. It just happened to some of them and it's a very devastating experience for anybody to go through. So if there's anything in this life you can do to prevent it, I think you should. So please take this video seriously and send it to anybody and everybody, both male and female. Because even if it's a guy you send it to, I'm sure he has sisters, he has a mom, he has daughters, you know, that can benefit from it, okay? The second thing is, I might laugh, I might use humor, I might joke about some things, but that does not in any way mean that what I'm talking about should be taken lightly, okay? Personally, I use humor, I use jokes to cope with uncomfortable or undesirable um, circumstances. So, yeah, the fact that I laugh about something, I joke about something doesn't mean that it's not or shouldn't be taken seriously because this is actually my life and it's actually really serious, okay? So, yeah, um, let's just start. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm a YouTuber based in Port I talk about motherhood, womanhood, I also do vlogs, family vlogs, and I also do DIY videos. So, if you're new to this channel, you're welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I truly, really appreciate every one of you. So this video is basically going to be a story time and also me sharing my experiences and the knowledge I have gained over the years going through what I went through, okay? So where did it all start? It started after I started having kids. I have two kids, by the way, if you don't know about them. I have two lovely daughters, Cora and Ava. So, before I had um, kids, I think I had done pap smear once, because in my hospital, it's required for you to do pap smear. Actually, yes, I did it once when I was um, trying to get pregnant. For any of you who don't know, I actually struggled with infertility for four years. So I did a pap smear during that period and everything was fine, everything was normal. Okay, so after I had Cora, because in my hospital, uh, you know pap smear is actually supposed to be done every three years. If you are over 21, it should be done every three years. If you are over, I think 35 or 40, it can be done three to five years. And if you are over 60, you can opt out of doing it at all. Because I think that the chances of you developing um, cervical cancer or contacting HPV at that um, age is really really low. That's what I think. I'm really not sure. Um, yeah, so um, So in my hospital they do the pap smear every three years, but once you have kids during your postpartum check the six weeks the six weeks postpartum check I think between six weeks and twelve weeks when you come for a postpartum check, they will do cervical, they will do a pap smear on you. So for anybody who doesn't know what a pap smear is, a pap smear is where you go to the hospital, your doctor goes into your cervix and takes out some cells, the cells at your cervix or the cells in your cervix area, they take out some cells, they use a swab, it's like a cotton swab, but a, a big cotton swab. So they use a speculum to open up your inside and then they use the cotton swab to you know take some of the cells and they put it into a bag and take it to the lab and the lab analyzes it so what the bag what so what the lab checks for is abnormal growth uh, or precancer cells or anything that shows that things are not normal okay so your test can come negative or positive if it's negative it means all is fine it means there's no abnormal growth it means you are okay now pap smear does not diagnose um, STDs, I think it's mostly done for HPV, which is the human papilo papilloma virus, human papilloma HPV, anyway, it's done to check HPV and it's done to check for any precancer cells or cancer, okay? So like I was saying before all this explanation, in my hospital, when you come for your post-pattern check, they do it for you. 
so it doesn't matter how many times even if you have two kids in three years they're going to do it for you so after i had cora um i think i went to the hospital like at my ninth week or the tenth week because yes i bled till nine weeks with cora yes it, it was just something else anyway that's a story for another day but I bled till nine weeks, so I couldn't do the six week check, six weeks check. And then after that, I don't remember going back for a check. I really don't remember going back for a check during Cora's time. I don't remember doing that test during Cora's time. But after I had Ava, um, Ava's birth too was a little bit traumatic for me. After I, after I had Ava, I bled for just like a week plus or so. So I was supposed to go back at six weeks for my check. Now, you guys, please don't be like me because I did not go back at that six weeks. I refused to go back at six weeks simply because number one, I hate hospitals. Like I hate, I hate going to the hospitals. I don't have, I don't have many good experiences with the hospitals. Like if you watch my um, infertility video, I'm sure you'll find out that I went to the hospital a lot. I opened bomb bomb a lot. So <laughs> anything that requires me opening bomb bomb, I, I really don't like going to the hospital for it. So yeah, after I had if I didn't go for my six weeks check simply because I knew that I was going to um, have best control inserted, I decided to go for the IUD. So I just said since I will still go back for the IUD, instead of opening bomb bomb twice, let me just go once they do insert the IUD, they do the pap smear and then insert the IUD. Okay, so yeah, I went back at six months and I got an IUD. In started six months postpartum so six months after I had Ava that was when I had my copper I think it's copper T or something IUD inserted so for those of you that are always leaving comments in my comment section saying things like you look pregnant uh, congratulations in advance please you guys should just stop it okay it's really annoying I'm just fat yes I know it's hard to believe considering I look like a Victoria's Secret model okay considering I look like a supermodel yes okay you, you just have to believe it i'm just fat i'm actually 30 kg over where i'm supposed to be over my normal weight so yeah when you see me looking some type of way just keep your mouth shut okay i said that child wants to jump over a copper fence or something i'm not about to get pregnant anytime soon so if i don't come to you and tell that i'm pregnant please refrain from making such comments in the comment section because it's really hurtful imagine if i was actually trying to get pregnant and i was struggling i mean you guys know i struggled with infertility before so imagine if i was actually maybe trying to get pregnant and i'm struggling with it then you're not leaving such comments in the comment section you can imagine how hurtful it is so please don't be the reason why any woman goes to bed crying thank god i'm over that thank god I'm, I'm not even trying to get pregnant but don't be the reason why any woman goes to bed crying okay except in fact, when you see a woman looking as if she, even if she looks nine months pregnant, refrain from saying it, especially she brings it up, okay? If you see her with a baby, act surprised, like, whoa, so you had a baby, don't start talking jazz. Anyway, sorry for that. I don't, just wanted to put it out there because I started getting those comments a lot lately. And some people just jump on the bandwagon, okay? Just because someone commented, oh, you look pregnant, doesn't mean that you should come and say, yes, it's true, you look pregnant. Oh, you actually do look pregnant. Oh, no, please stop it, okay? Thank you. Anyway, so what I was trying to say was, yeah, so I had my IUD inserted at six months and before the, I had the IUD inserted, I told my doctor, my OBGYN doctor, I told her that I haven't done the pap smear, so she was like, oh, okay. So she did the pap smear for me and then had my IUD inserted. So now this is where the story gets funny. She told me to come back after six weeks so that she can check my IUD and then I'll also collect the results of my pap smear tests okay so she told me to come back, come back after six weeks but i remember six weeks or five weeks after i traveled to lagos to see my sister because my sister had a baby and you know i traveled with my kids i went to see her in lagos so i didn't go for that six weeks um i didn't go for that six weeks check and i didn't even check my results okay so fast forward to this year all these, all these things I, I, I talked about happened last year because Eva was born last year, February. I can't even believe that girl was just born last year. Like, <laughs> it feels like she's been born since how many years? I can't believe it's just last year. Fast forward this year, those time I started seeing a lot of pictures or videos or talks about women who got pregnant while they had IUD. Women who got pregnant, surprise pregnancy, while they had their IUDs. Um, already inserted. So, but I saw a picture. I remember seeing a picture about a baby that was born with the IUD on the baby's head. I was like, this is peculiar. 
ah uh, ah uh, you know you know what green you have i don't know what you're saying what's your son ed that you really want to come okay so when i saw that picture hmm i said panic you know because i was like no you know i didn't go and check my iud at six weeks so i was like ah let me just go now and go and check because i don't want to surprise pregnancy you i beg so that time i think this happened around was it february or march so i think around march or so so i went to the hospital to see my doctor to have my um iud checked so while she was checking my iud asking me questions she now asked me that has she done pap smear on me before i said yes she has she was like oh okay the normal we won't have talked to but i was like let me just talk and i said but i haven't collected the results she was like oh really uh, why have you not collected the results need to come for your six weeks check so i asked me because i told her i traveled this and that and she said oh no i like, okay let her just check the results for me now the way my hospital works is when you finish a procedure with the OBGYN, you are discharged back to your GP. We have our GP separate, our OBGYN separate. So you are going to be discharged back to your GP. You collect your results from your GP or whatever. If he now feels like you need, to, he needs to refer you back to the OBGYN, then he will refer you back to the OBGYN. But if he doesn't see any need, he will either treat you or you are just going to continue with him. So when she went to check my results. She couldn't check it because my result had been sent to my GP, not her own system. I don't know how it works, but it wasn't on her system. So she had to call my GP to ask him for my results. Uh, my GP said that he had a lot of patients, but and that the system was down or something at his own end. So there was someone was trying to fix his system, so he wouldn't be able to check the results. But that as soon as they fix it, he would check the results for me. So my OBG, my uh, my doctor now said that's my OBGYN now now said okay, um, since the results are not going to be are not going to come out really quickly, that I should just go home. But I should give her my number. When my doctor sees my results, she will contact me. So I quickly gave her my number. I took her number and I left. So while I was in the parking lot, as I was about driving out, she called me. In fact, the moment I saw her call. I was like something is something is off okay something is off about this because she called me and said please uh, madam can you please come back immediately have you gone have you gone far i said no i'm in back she was like okay please just try and come back immediately blah blah blah, blah. so i reversed parked went to her office to see her so as i sat down she now told me okay that she just got my result that thankfully the system came up and my doctor sent my results immediately that um, actually my results are showing that I have abnormal cells, that most of the cells there are degenerated, I have some precancer cells. As in, the way she said it, I'm even putting more emotion than she did. She was like, um, we discovered a lot of precancer cells, Your, a lot of these cells have, have even started degenerating, they have gone very far, so you may need to have, so we need to have another pap smear immediately then we'll now know if we're going to do a biopsy and no just like talking and in fact i was just hearing that's all i was hearing because once i had precancer and trust me maybe what if i know what i know now i won't have panicked so much but i didn't know anything about all this i didn't even know that's not something i've ever researched before so once she just said you have precancer cells a lot of cells have degenerated as I heard those two words, I was just like, no, 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 no. My brain just shut down. All I was just saying was, I'll have to reschedule you for another appointment. So, and the way my hospital is, is everything is by appointment. Though. You can't just walk in, except it's an emergency. You can't just walk in and get a, and you know, see the doctor. They have to schedule you for an appointment. And okay, there was another statement she made. She was like, why didn't the lab contact me? when they got my results and honestly to, to be frank why i did not go back for my results was i felt if they found anything that was alarming they would contact me so that was why i didn't go back so she was like ah, why didn't they contact me she even called the lab and asked them why didn't you contact besides saying something on the phone i don't know what she was saying you know they were going back and forth all this while i was just like jesus 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 help me help me help me help me don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. Okay, that's what I was just telling myself. Don't panic, don't panic. It's going to be okay. It's going to be alright. Don't panic. So anyway, um, she now told me, okay, that I'll have to come back. That the nearest appointment she had was in three weeks. So I'll have to come back in three weeks for uh, another pap smear. So that 
actually she, she could have or she could have um ordered for is it order now whatever she could have recommended the biopsy immediately but because my pap smear was done long ago i think it was even over six it was like over oh i think over eight months that i did that the previous one that got this result now was over eight months so she had to do another one before she will now order the biopsy or an other other there's one something else you call column something call comes copy or whatever anyway so if i remember the name i put it on the screen okay so um she now booked me for three weeks after good three weeks after now the day i was supposed to do the tests my period started so i had to go back and tell her my period has started i feel like my period started a day before i tell her my period right now i can't do the test so she had to book me again for another a month after that in fact i don't know what my doctor was my doctor was even doing i think she was just choosing the next available days because I mean, it's, no, it's a no-brainer. If, if I started my period yesterday, if you're booking me for a month after, I'm most likely going to be on my period again, okay? So, I don't even know why she did that, but I think it was the nearest day she could find. So, she booked me for a month after. I came back a month after. My period started the morning I was supposed to. I was spotting, actually, the morning I was supposed to do that one. So, she had to book me again for, I think, two weeks after now. So, that two weeks after, I now went back and did another um, pap smear. Now, throughout this time that all these things were happening it was only my husband that i told i did not tell any friend i didn't tell my sister i didn't tell my parents normally my parents are very praying parents they have they, they, they have faith and all that but i was like my parents are not going to take it lightly you know when anybody hears cancer now i mean <laughs> my parents are not going to take it lightly especially since we're not sure of what the situation is and i told myself I could go back and it could be nothing. If it's nothing, there's no point bothering them, okay? And if it's something, there's really no point telling them because they are very, they are going to panic and I just didn't want to make them panic. And to be honest, um, yeah, I'm kind of happy I didn't tell them. Although now I'm telling them because they're going to watch this video. So, daddy, I want me. When you're watching this video, sorry that I didn't tell you guys, but I just wanted, I just didn't want you guys to um, worry so much. So anyway, while things were going on, the only my husband that I told, he has this way of acting like all is well. I think I've said this, I said this before in my um, infertility journey story. He always acts like all is well. He doesn't panic. He doesn't fret. He doesn't, uh, you know. So it's annoying in the sense that sometimes when you are going through a situation, you want someone to panic with you. You want someone to be like, oh my god, to freak out with you. But at the same time, the good thing about him not freaking out is because he didn't freak out, my faith was strengthened. Okay, my faith was strengthened that all is going to be well. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, having a partner who is strong actually helps strengthen you even though sometimes it's annoying i wanted to get angry or panic with me just sometimes <laughs> i wanted to attend my pity party with me okay so when i told him he was strong he was like he didn't really have so much show so much emotions so time to collect the results i had to collect, collect the result three weeks after i did i finally did the pap smear so before then ah when i go home i leave okay i forgot to say this part when she when she told me about that pre cancer this one when i go home i couldn't eat me that i use food to cope with stress okay i use food to cope with stress so anytime you see me gaining weight just know that okay this girl is actually stressed out so me that i use food to cope with stress to cope with grief to cope with everything i could not eat although it didn't last yeah evidently <laughs> evidently it didn't last i think after like two days i was like come back i said eating anything joe <laughs> I cannot come and come and keep myself jaw. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So I went back for the results. I was shaking when I entered her 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 um, office. I was really shaking. She was like, "Oh, okay, madam, sit down. Yeah, okay, look at yourself. Okay, okay." So the funniest thing happened. She opened my results, and next thing she said is, "Oh, okay, yeah, your result is normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, why did you even um, what what made us?" do another test because i can see you did the test before that's what she was asking me i was like yeah i did a test before and the results said that i had pre-cancer this one bubble to bubble. she was like oh really ah that she's surprised she now had to go and check the results and i'm like no everything is fine everything is normal that she's just going to just start that she's just going to just that she's just going to discharge me immediately um that I could just come back in some months time to do another test if i want to but that everything is normal i don't really need to do another test but if i want to i can come back in november yeah i've actually i'm actually for i forgot that i'm supposed to go go back i just remember that i'm supposed to go back yeah so yeah i'm going to just after this video i'm going to book my appointment anyway so i can do it this 
I can read maybe this week or next week. Most likely next week anyway. Yeah, so she just quickly wrote a discharge um, note and gave them a date for me to come back, but she has she's now hands off. I'm now back to my GP. All these things happen so quickly. When I say so quickly, it happened in the space of 10 minutes. And that was it. And this is something that I was worried for months, for months, literally months. This happened in uh, March. The first incident happened in March and I ended up getting my results in, I think, mid-June. Yeah, I ended up getting my results on, on June 25th or so, yes. So I was worried for months for nothing, for absolutely nothing at the end of the day. So, yes, thank God, okay, the results were fine, but... To me, the way she handled it was just really weird. Like, it was really, really weird. Like, she didn't even remember that. that she was even asking me why did we have to do another test, this and that. And I was like, hello, madam. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah. Thankfully, um, my test came back normal. But, I won't lie if it doesn't bother me. Um, if it doesn't bother me that maybe the second test was wrong. To be honest, yeah. It actually does bother me sometimes that... What if the second test was wrong? What if the first one was right? Or that's the that's the devil speaking anyway. Because I mean, why should I be thinking that way? But yeah, it does bother me. Um, I pray against it. I can never have anything like that. Yes, it is not a death sentence. Early detection is actually your best bet at preventing the cancer. So if you detect it early, they can just remove those cells and you know do whatever they do to to make you better. Okay. So that is. This is actually the main reason why I decided to make this video. Please, I'm begging you with everything in me. Please, go and do a pap smear. When I talk to a lot of Nigerian women, when I talk to a lot of, a lot of women, basically, I realized that so many women do not do these tests. Like, how? How? I told someone one time that in my hospital, I was six weeks check, they do your pap smear. And she was like, pap smear? What, which one is pap smear? I said, nah, uh, and she had like three kids at this point. I was like, you've not done any password before. She said, no, she's not done any password before. Before. I was like, you better go and do it, okay? Don't be there thinking that, yeah, so it's, it's me and God, we are, we, are, we, are, we are tight. It's not about that, okay? He has given us the wisdom. He has given us the sense. He has given doctors the wisdom to actually tackle these things early because it's part of life, okay? It's part of life. So, please, if you are listening to this, if you are watching this video, and you are over 21 i think when you're below 21 you don't really have to do it but if you are over 21 if you're sexually active please go and do a pap smear and also do a mammogram they also do mammograms in my hospital um when you get i think it's when you really get pregnant or before you get pregnant or something i know we do mammograms or not just mammograms we do the normal uh, manual the doctor will just um, check your breast for any long post or anything like that okay so please if you're listening to him to me go for your mammogram go for your checks and do your pap smear go for your test and go and check your results if you're like me and doesn't like to check results please go and check your results not checking your results is not going to remove the results it's not going to erase the results okay that you didn't check it does not mean that the, the results don't exist they exist they're just waiting for you whenever you're ready you will come and face the truth or face the facts, okay? So, yeah, and if you're afraid, if you're a kind of person that, oh, I don't want them to see anything, that they don't see anything doesn't mean that you don't have it. So, you better go for your checks, okay? And your best bet at combating these things, if you actually have a chance, or if there's actually a chance that you're going to get cancer or anything like that, your best bet is actually to detect it early. Most cancers are curable if they are detected early enough okay not curable preventable if they are detected early enough okay i don't know if it's most too i just said that i don't know if it's most but i think breast cancer and um, cervical cancer are actually preventable if you if you if you detect them early or if you on the onset or whatever so um basically that's my story oh that is my story when this was happening i didn't tell anybody like i keep saying i can't person when i'm going through the worst of the worst i do not tell anybody not because i'm trying to be secretive i'm actually not a secretive person which is funny i'm not a secretive person i can say everything and anything like you know but there's some information that i feel um should be time sensitive yeah some information that actually time sensitive sorry if i'm sounding somehow nasally or if i'm sniffing it's because i've had a cold for the past how many days the thing has refused to go 
and no, it's not pregnancy. I'm not pregnant. It's just cold. It's just kata. My children also have it. Are they pregnant too? So please, it's not pregnancy. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, like I was saying, some information are actually time sensitive. It's not everything you say every time. Some things you say immediately they happen. Some things you say years after they happen. Some things you never say. So yeah, that's it about it. The pap smear is not really painful it's just uncomfortable because they are going to use a speculum to actually open your cervix i think for me i think the, the discomfort i feel or even sometimes i feel pain I, I feel i feel pain but sometimes i feel it's mostly in my head because i hear the speculum like when, when they are screwing something like screwing it to open up or screwing it to stay open or something when i'm hearing that sound it sounds very uh, i don't know then when i now goes into do this i'm like uh, i usually tense up so um they always advise women that when you want to go for that try and relax if you relax your body is not going to be painful if you tense up it might be painful um but yeah it's not it's not a it's not a painful experience generally when you're done you're not supposed to you're supposed to be fine but you can have maybe little little spotting yeah i think little spotting just maybe one or two and then you'll be fine by, by the time you get home you'll actually you'll actually be fine but if by the time you get home you're bleeding or whatever then please go back to your doctor but Generally, pap smears are harmless and you know actually good for you. Okay, so yeah, um, the precancer cells, if they discover precancer cells, they can actually remove those cells and prevent them from turning cancerous. Okay, they can actually remove those cells, so it's not the end of the world if you're diagnosed with it. So please go to the hospital and do your test. Um, that's it. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Like I said before, please share this video with everybody and anybody. Let them know that these things happen to any. If anybody had told me my entire life that I'll be diagnosed with anything like that, I'll tell them, ha, ah, never. Um, I'm a Christian. I pray. Such things can't come near me. I have faith and all that. Yeah. As much as I all that and all that is true, please. Like I said, it's God that gave doctors the sense to diagnose such things. Okay, so please just go and do your test. It's a routine test. Once in three years is enough to save your life. Save a life today and share this video. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Mwah.